Hi, this is Stuart Weems and welcome to the Investopoly podcast. My goal is to give you simple, easy to understand strategies, insights and tips to help you master the game of building wealth. And in this episode, I'd like to talk about interest rates, uh, particularly rising interest rates, which have a topic that's really dominated the airways over the last uh, week or so. Uh, And particularly, I think some investors have been quite spooked by the fact that over the last two months, the Reserve Bank of Australia has increased the cash rate by three quarters of 1%, which is, you know, a pretty significant hike. And if you consider the impact of that with the, the background of much higher prices for goods and services due to inflation, um, it can rattle a few cages, I think, and, and get people a little bit concerned. So let's make sure we've got a realistic expectation of, you know, what, what to expect on an interest rate environment uh, perspective over the coming, say, year or so. Well, uh, in terms of forming those expectations, we can really look to the market and or uh, market commentators such as economists and so forth. Uh, And I should note that, uh, you know, it's anybody's guess and, uh, you know, there's been a lot of studies around forecasts and so forth and it really does show that the reliability is about 50-50. You may as well flip a coin on it. Uh, which it suggests, but I, I guess it's uh, worthwhile at least considering uh, what the so-called experts are, are predicting. So most of the banks think between now and March 2023, uh, interest rates, the cash rate, will rise between 0.14 to 0.15 of a percent. So around about one and a half percent potentially uh, in terms of future interest rate increases over the coming months, which is pretty considerable. If you have a look at the money market over the same period of time, so until March 2023, the money market is predicting, or at least the yield curve showing that interest rates will rise 2.6% over that time. But most commentators think this is a bit hawkish and unlikely to happen, and I'm certainly very much in that camp. So the theory is that due to higher inflation, the cash rate should return to its neutral rate as soon as possible to avoid monetary policy adding inflationary pressures or adding to inflationary pressures is probably a better way to say it. So the the neutral cash rate is when the cash rate is neither expansionary or contractionary. So it's really neutral. It's not really eating into budgets or adding to budgets. And most commentators believe that the neutral rate, neutral cash rate, is somewhere between Two and three percent, and so if they increase interest rates by one and a half percent from here, we're almost smack bang in that in the middle of that range. Now, if interest rates stay below the neutral rate, essentially what you're doing from a monetary policy perspective is adding to inflationary woes, not subtracting from them, because uh, interest interest bills for businesses and consumers uh, is are below you know what normalised levels are, or at least what. Uh, the government would think is normalised levels. Now, the problem is, though, in actual fact, uh, it it causes it can cause uh, even more pain for consumers because not only do they have to navigate higher interest rates, but of course, as being well documented, we've got higher prices as well, higher goods and services prices. Now, the inflation print came in at 5.1% for the March quarter. It's almost certainly going to be higher Uh, for the June quarter. And if we look to other developed economies, you know, inflation is approaching sort of 10%. Um, US uh, released their inflation, it's north of 8%. Uh, UK is even higher than that. So, uh, and anyone that's been to a supermarket or a petrol station uh, lately knows that actual inflation for a lot of goods is much, much higher than these readings. You know, we're, we're dealing with in some... Uh, some goods, you know, 30, 40, 50% higher prices. uh, And that really eats into uh, personal budgets. Um, And this higher inflation together with higher interest rates is really going to dampen consumer and business confidence. It's already done that. Uh, And that in turn, that lower confidence uh, will call economic growth, so GDP growth. Now, the neutral rate might very well be between 2 and 3% when prices of goods and services are at normal levels. But as I said, if prices are high, then the neutral rate might be actually lower than 2 to 
uh, and we'll only find out, I guess, through trial and error, but it could conceivably be closer to 1% to 1.5%. So therefore, if the RBA does push through 1.5% of interest rate increases between now and March next year, it is entirely possible that what will happen is there'll be too much pressure on the economy that GDP will decline, so growth, economic growth will decline, and then uh, the central banks will need to ease monetary policy and start cutting rates. And in fact, uh, CBA last week forecasted that the RBA will actually cut rates by half a percent in the second half of 2023. And I think that is entirely possible uh, because really demand, as I've uh, spoken about in this podcast previously, is supply-driven not necessarily demand-driven, which is not to say that interest rates shouldn't normalise as soon as possible. But the problem is that we don't really need to increase them too much because personal budgets are already under pressure. Having said all that, we've got to keep some long-term perspective on this. I mean, I was watching TV last week and they were interviewing people off the street. And, you know, if you didn't have any context, you would uh, be excused for uh, assuming that interest rates had got to 10%. I mean, people were quite alarmist and really worried about it and so forth. Uh, and I guess I shouldn't be surprised that, you know, hey, watching commercial television is, is alarmist. Uh, surely I should have been well conditioned to expect that over the last couple of years. But the reality is that interest rates, even if they do rise by half a percent, are still below Um, historical averages. So by the end of this month, after the banks have passed on the most recent RBA hike of half a percent, uh, standard variable home loan rates uh, will be around 4.75 and investment standard variable rates will be in the low sixes, 6.1 percent around about that mark. Uh, Of course, borrowers, uh, particularly new borrowers, uh, are always offered hefty interest rate discounts uh, off the standard variable rate, so of around 2% or more. So therefore, the most home loan rates will be you know, high twos, low threes, uh, sort of in that range. If you have a look at the average standard, standard variable rate um, over the past 20 years, it's uh, 6.36% uh, uh, based on RBA data. Um, but over that period of time, interest rate discounts weren't nearly as high as they are today. So if we take maybe 0.7 off that rate, uh, it gives us an average rate of closer to 5.5%. So we're at sort of around 3 uh, it, you know, by the time they push through the most recent cut. Um, uh, it's 55 is long-term average. If we get another 1.5%, we'll be up to 4.5%, but still below, almost a full percent below the, the long-term average. So let's keep it in context. I think the discussion or the rhetoric around interest rates, they're still low. And there's, a, as I said, a prospect that they will reduce uh, next year. But most importantly, you know, we don't really see, at least at this stage, and I'm always conscious that interest rate expectations can change on a dime. Uh, but at least at this stage, we don't see interest rates uh, moving above that long term average, which I think is good news for home buyers and property investors. Now, let's talk about fixed rates. Now, fixed rates are really driven by how much the bank can borrow for, so its cost of funds. Uh, If the bank borrows uh, some three-year money at 2%, for example, well, it can afford to on-lend that at 3% or 3.5%. Given the interest rate curve is unrealistically steep, um, it means that borrowing costs, fixed rate borrowing costs for the banks, are elevated. And as a result, fixed rates at the moment are unattractive. So three-year rates are around high fours, uh, five-year rates uh, even above 5%. So certainly not attractive from that perspective. But two things could occur over the next year or so. Uh, Firstly, the interest rate curve should eventually normalise. I mean, that will happen. It's just a question of when. Uh, And secondly, if the market does start expecting interest rate cuts, from the RBA, particularly if economic growth slows down, then we may see fixed rates fall. So my general advice to borrowers at the moment is, uh, if you're not already fixed, remain variable for now. um, And maybe it might be worth considering uh, fixing in sometime next year, probably towards the end of next year, I would have thought, um, but is obviously going to depend on fixed rates at that time. Now, if you already have some fixed rate loans, it's entirely possible 
that your current fixed rate is, you know, 2% or sometimes even below 2%. Uh, and so at this stage, you'd be feeling pretty smart or, or lucky or maybe a combination of both, uh, particularly if you fixed your rate last year. Uh, you know, in hindsight, that's looking like a, a really good decision. Uh, but of course, all fixed rates mature and at some point, uh, your interest rate will revert to a, a more likely a higher variable rate uh, and borrowers need to really consider this carefully. And so what I would uh, advise people to do is just pretend you're on a variable rate uh, and uh, adjust your cash flow accordingly, uh, which will mean that you'll uh, it'll promote you to save more, either in an offset account or wherever that might be. Um, but most importantly, it won't be a cash flow shock when your fixed rate does expire. So for example, if your loan was a million dollars and your interest rate was 2%, your interest bill is about $1,600 a month. Um, but now if you had a variable rate, it's probably if you, if you weren't fixed and it was variable, it would be probably closer to 3% today, which would cost you about $2,500 a month. So that extra um, $900 odd dollars, uh, you should um, look at saving uh, and putting in an offset account or investing elsewhere. Um, ultimately, you're still going to benefit from the low fixed rate and, and build your asset base. But most importantly, at least it won't be a, a cash flow shock. Now, some clients have been asking, you know, should I adjust my investment strategy or approach as a result of higher interest rates? Well, firstly, when contemplating particularly investing in property, but really doing anything such as buying a home, you always must consider affordability at, at a more meaningful or longer term rate. Uh, and uh, from from a conservative perspective, I would typically counsel clients to use six or six and a half percent to really measure their their debt affordability. Uh, it's possible that interest rates will rise one day above six or six and a half percent, but if they do, I don't think it's going to be materially above that, uh, nor for for that uh, uh, an extended period of time. So if it's if it's doable or affordable on six or six and a half percent, then go ahead and borrow. Uh, if it's not, then what you really got to do is uh, really reconsider um, your strategy to either reduce your borrowing budget or invest in alternative assets. But really, um, just because interest rates are rising, again, albeit below the long term average, um, doesn't mean that necessarily mean if you've uh, got a well considered strategy that you should make any changes. Now, I've included a chart in the link in the show notes um, which project how. Uh, how sensitive um, uh, investment property cash flow is to interest rates. Uh, and so what it does is predict the after-tax cost of holding an investment property at various interest rates between 2 and 6%. And you can see how sensitive it is. And, and hopefully uh, what it does is forewarn investors to make sure that they're prepared uh, for the eventual h- higher holding costs um, if they're looking at a pr- prospective investment. So to sum up then, I think we've got to be prepared for higher interest rates over the coming months. Um, I think we've got to be prepared for the RBA, you know, increasing at a much faster pace than they have previously. Uh, I think that's going to have a negative impact on the economy, um, particularly from an economic growth perspective. And uh, that pain is will really be centred on lower income earners because they don't have the as much sort of fat in the in their household budgets to accommodate both higher interest rates and higher prices, particularly for non-discretionary items like food and uh, utilities and, and those sorts of things. Uh, but ultimately, the economy's uh, in pretty good shape. And uh, if it does struggle, uh, I'm sure the RBA will uh, react accordingly um, because their goal is to keep uh, inflation sustainably between that 2 and 3% band. So if they start seeing that their push rates too high too quickly, uh, they can always react uh, and, and cut rates. But most importantly, the underlying economy is still very healthy. And whilst it might be a bit of a bumpy road over the next uh, year and a bit, um, we should take some solace that firstly, interest rates are e- expected to remain below the long-term average, uh, which creates a, a great opportunity for investors. Uh, and the underlying economy is pretty sound. So Uh, Once we find that neutral interest rate, whatever that is, depending on circumstances and inflation, uh, the economy should perform uh, in a robust manner.
Okay, so that's it. So I'd like to sincerely thank everyone for listening to the podcast uh, and just remind you, if you do leave ratings or reviews, uh, hopefully five star, um, it certainly does help with the rankings and I appreciate it. That's it for me for this week. Uh, Bye for now.